Hey, kind of a different video today. Here are eight pieces of advice that I wish somebody told me when I was a young engineer entering the workforce. And these things will make you learn faster, make you progress faster, make you more productive. They'll make people trust you and make people want to promote you. So number one, bug people. If you don't know how to do something, find the person that does and ask to sit down at their desk and watch them. Say, you don't know how control sequences work. Maybe you don't need to know yet, but ask for a crash course anyway. And if senior mechanical engineers are busy, they'll say so. Just ask if you can come back at a better time and then ask them when that time is. The good leaders will make time for you and they're the ones you want to get to know. Second piece of advice is don't stay in your lane. If there's something that interests you but it's above your pay grade, ask if you can be involved anyway just to learn. Personal anecdote, when I was just starting out, I was really interested in the estimating and proposal and pitching process. And so I asked one of the senior mechanical principals if I could join him to a very important meeting where they were going to pitch their proposal to owners on why they should be the engineers on the job. And he said, no, that's the worst that can happen. They say no. But after the meeting, he invited me into his office and he showed me how they pit their proposal together, how they estimate the engineering for a project. And I got to learn about margins, engineering costs, all these different light items that go into the engineering process and the engineering proposal, which is knowledge that I've been able to carry forward. I would have never gotten that if I didn't ask a crazy question. Third piece of advice is take the FE and the PE exam ASAP. There's no reason to wait. Even if you need more experience before you can officially get your PE, just get the tests out of the way. They only get harder the farther you get from formal education in college, because believe it or not, you're not doing phase change calculations that much in the workforce. So just get the tests out of the way, even if you don't want to stamp drawings for years to come. Number four is don't miss a deadline and plan for review. So if the design is due on Friday, finish on Wednesday, pester your supervisor to review it with you on Thursday, make corrections, and then have the actual thing done by Friday. Don't wait until the deadline to ask questions. Oh, I wasn't sure about this part, so I just guessed is not cool. Uh, do your research, ask around before the deadline. And there's a really positive side effect to this, which is if your boss knows that you are going to ask them if something comes up, they're not going to feel the need to hover over your shoulder or micromanage you. They won't worry about you because they know you will initiate if there's any uncertainty. So it's a win-win. The fifth piece of advice is be smart, act humble. So if you're super smart, just show it in your work. When you collaborate with others, focus on asking questions, even asking questions you already know the answer to, just to confirm. And take notes. It's the easiest way to show humility and show your desire to obtain and retain knowledge. And I love doing this. If somebody asks me a question I don't know the answer to or I don't have good response, I'll be totally silent and just start taking notes and say, I don't know, I'll look into that right after this. It's expected that you don't know everything, but if you don't know it the second time it was asked, then that's egg on your face. Advice number six is don't lie and don't make excuses ever. Do not fudge answers or make something up on the fly, even if it sounds reasonable. It's completely see-through and immediately ruins your reputation. And even if you have a good excuse for something, don't bother. If you miss a deadline, if you're late to work, just apologize. Watch the difference between these two responses. I know, I'm sorry, I won't let it happen again. Versus, I know there was traffic and when I got to the office, my battery was dead and I had to recharge it, I'm sorry. Which one sends a better message? If they ask you why, then tell them the truth, but what's done is done, and what they really want is assurance that it's not gonna happen again. So give them that assurance. Show that you're sorry and show that it's not gonna happen again. Piece of advice number seven is not for everybody. It's don't be entitled just get it done. So don't rationalize and say, I shouldn't have to work late. Management should have planned this better. It's their fault I can't hit this deadline in 40 hours. Sure, maybe it's in your contract that you're only expected to work 40 hours per week. But if you want to move up faster, if you want to make more than your peers, then you have to work more than your peers. So if work-life balance is your top priority, that's fine. But don't be surprised when the guy who is working late and doing twice, three times as much gets promoted faster. Okay, the last one. Number eight is don't gossip and don't complain. Gossips ruin teams. If you have an issue, take it up with that person one-on-one. -on -one. Ask humbly if you can work out a solution. If issues persist and you can't find a solution after intentionally looking for one in good faith, then you only have two options. Suck it up or leave. But don't gossip, don't complain, don't try and sabotage and ruin the team. That just makes you look worse.